Hi, Johnny Schrag here for Straight News TV. I'm here today with Sarah. I'm just going to show you Sarah's full name. Sarah Trafford Ferguson Taylor. I'm just going to pan into the camera one second. Can you see that, Serge? Just to show you that Sarah actually changed the name by Depole. Can you just uh, briefly elaborate on that, please, Sarah? Basically, um, yeah. There's your season ticket. Thank you. Don't lose that. I don't need it now. Um, basically, I got divorced and decided that my middle name of Jane was very, very boring. So I thought, what a better fit, fit in tribute to the best manager ever to have lived than to change my name to Ferguson and Old Trafford. I didn't want to be old in there because I'm only 36 and that seems to be taking a mickey a little bit. So Trafford Ferguson seemed the perfect name. Amazing. And, and is it something whereby when anyone sees uh, your birth certificate or, or any official documentation, they always kind of take a double double glance and ask you about it? Um, ringing the ticket office is definitely interesting when they ask for your full name. And it's um, Serge, I normally get a giggle sometimes because half the ticket office are City fans, unfortunately. Um, but obviously my my birth certificate says a different name to what I am. But um, when I go to Euro Airways, I have to provide my passport, which is not in my name, and my depot certificate, which says Sarah Trafford Ferguson Taylor. Right, right, okay. And then obviously that, that's not the only kind of, uh, shall we say, s signal that you're a massive United fan. Obviously, you've, you've been showing me your impressive array of Manchester United-themed tattoos. Yes. Do you mind uh, showing the camera a couple of those there at the, at the back of... Uh, try. Was it 28 you said you had in total? I have all 20 years we've won the league tattooed down my back, which I can't unfortunately show you. But um, I have the badge and I have a red devil. I have a Champions League tattoo on my arm. And I had my first tattoo, which says Manchester United FC on top of my right arm, which I got when I was 18 on my 18th birthday. Amazing. And you had the Man United stick, man, I saw. That's quite old school there. That's, that's, that's really nice, actually. Nice and simple. I like that one. I do like that one. I'm to remember that because that was in about the 70s and I was only born in 77, so... Yeah. No, I remember, I remember seeing that... Uh, Sort of, you know, as a symbol in old programs and stuff and all sorts. And that's very cool, that one. I like that one. There was a lady that had it on her arm, and I was like, I want that. So she said that she explained to me because she was about in the 60s and she explained to me what it was. And I was like, that's my next tattoo. So when I had the 2013 tattoo done on my back, I got that as well. Amazing. No, I like that one. I might, uh, you know, you never know. In a couple of years, you might see me with one. Um, what was I going to say? No, I mean, to be honest, I just want to talk to you about yourself as a United fan because it's more fascinating than the season we've just endured. Yeah. Um, but we were talking off camera a little bit. You mentioned you've been at the under-21 game. Yeah. Uh, so you're obviously a, a passionate supporter, shall we say. Yeah. <laughs> and, and obviously, Serge, our cameraman here tonight, he um, he goes a lot with Jay on Jay's minibus. I believe yeah. you're also a... Uh, uh, you, you frequent that bus to away games, shall we say? Um, I've been on it once, actually. It was um, it was good fun, yeah. Tottenham away. It was my first away of the season. Um, and I haven't been on it since because, well, I've just been other places and I've done all the Euro aways, unfortunately, which have taken most of my money. So, um, yeah. league aways have been kind of a bit harder to come by, really. Get a ticket for a league aways, um, pretty hard. So. Okay, and, and do you recommend Jay's bus? I've been on it myself to West Brom, and uh, it, w it was a great laugh, to be fair. In fact, we met here at nine in the morning for our first pint. Yeah, that's the one. Um, it was a good laugh. Jay's a nice bloke, and um, yeah, it was pretty good. I had a good laugh. There was about, it was pretty empty. There was about 10 of us on the minibus, but it was um, a long drive down to Tottenham. We nearly didn't make the game, because Jay does like to leave it late. Yeah. Um, he doesn't like to leave his drink in the pub, and unfortunately, we didn't leave Blaze till about 45 minutes late. So we ended up getting to Tottenham with about half an hour of the game to go, so... And then he had to find somewhere to park and he had to run to White Hart Lane. Yeah, so it doesn't sound too dissimilar to uh, to the West Brom uh, game this year. But um, what was I going to say then? No, I mean, obviously, ju just talking about this year, you said you were, you said you were born in 77? I was born in 77, yeah. OK, so do you remember sort of your first experiences of coming to Old Trafford and kind of what era, what, what year it would have been? Unfortunately, as much as I will get grief for this, I was actually born in London. So um, I moved to Manchester 15 years ago. My first game was actually in 95 when Beckham scored from the halfway line at Sellers Park against Wimbledon. And I was actually behind the goal that he scored into. And that was my first ever United game. Um, unfortunately, none of my family liked football. My dad was a Chelsea fan, yeah. which is just no. Um, three brothers, none liked football. So I had no actual football and influence. And the reason I support United is because the first team I saw on TV, I liked Reds. I picked United. That is purely simple. That's the only reason I support United. David Beckham maybe had a little... little role to play in that decision? <laughs> Not when I was five, no. I started supporting United when I was five in 82. Oh, right. 
Right. So, so it was I thought you were more normal white side than David Beckham at the time, but I didn't really look at him that way. <laughs> ah, so so your first game was the Wimbledon yeah, away, but you game, but you started supporting them well before yeah. then. Eighty two, roughly, when I was about five, saw them on TV, and that was me hooked. And then obviously I didn't get to a game till I was eighteen, but that was just circumstance really. When you're a kid and your parents don't like football, you don't really. No one's gonna take you to Old Trafford. So as soon as I was old enough to be able to move up here, I gave up my job, gave up my family, yeah. and moved up here. Okay, and then so obviously, you know, you, uh, sort of being at the era f that you're from, you, you know, myself as well a little bit, I sort of remember the times when we weren't the, the dominant force that we uh, we had been under the Sir Alex Ferguson. Not in the, Well, not now, now, as I say, under Sir Alex Ferguson. Um, it's, it's been a difficult season, hasn't it, to, to kind of endure as a Red? I mean, we've all, we all realise the transition will be difficult, but it's probably exceeded all of our expectations in that respect <laughs> exactly. it's, it's, it's been bad hasn't it yeah it's been it's been a struggle at times um i stood by on david moyes literally till the day he left but you could see he wasn't the right man for the job it was miles too big for him and he tried you know what i mean i can't put the man down at all he tried his best but just too big a job for him from everton which is like no transfer budget you got the players you got, do your best with them. He done, he done a good job at everything. I mean, nothing outstanding to make him warrant the United job. Apart from the fact Fergie coming along and saying, here's David Moyes, give him the job. Yeah. And unfortunately, as much as many people might not like me saying this, Fergie's a bit to blame for giving David Moyes the job. And the Glazers shouldn't have let Fergie pick the manager. Yeah. They should have picked their own man. Yeah, I mean, in retrospect, obviously, you know, we, we look back now and we kind of look at the, the details in the, in the cold light of day as they say and yeah like like you pointed out there some of the facts you know he he was a solid mid mid table manager but you know really did he warrant the one of the biggest jobs in football and probably in red team we're not a mid table team well we are now but not quite just above mid table but um as scousers keep pointing out we're mid table we're not we're seventh <laughs> i know scousers can't count but we're not we're not we're not tenth we're seventh but you know everton are a mid table team unfortunately they're above us this year and Martinez has done a brilliant job at Everton. You can't fault what he's done with literally the same players that Moyes had. Unfortunately, Moyes bought Fellaini with him, which £27.5 million pound for a tree is quite bad. Because <laughs> that, that is about as effective as he kind of stands in the middle of the park and just dwaddles his feet from side to side. I actually think a tree might have kept more possession tonight percentage-wise than Fellaini did. But yeah, no, fair point. It's a fair point. And then obviously... In, you know, just sort of uh, to wrap up then in terms of next year, obviously the, the rumours indicate that um, that Van Gaal is going to come in tomorrow. Uh, a lot of Reds really hope that Giggsy stays on in some capacity uh, to learn, you know, the learn ropes under his under his guidance. Um, what can you hope for next year? You know, as, you know, at the end of the day, we are united. We want to be in the Champions League. Do you think next year with the right signings, with the right manager, that we'll be back in the top four. Yeah, I don't see a reason why not. I mean, Van Gaal is not a... I wouldn't class him as, like, a, a full-time permanent manager. He's not going to be here for the long haul, is he? He's not going to be... There's never going to be another Fergie. There's never going to be another 26-year manager. Van Gaal, three, four years, tops the thing. He's 62. He was going to retire until the United job come along. After Holland in the World Cup, he was going to retire. You know, he's come along because the United job's here. Every manager in the world wants a United job. And Fergie left, everyone's perked up. Oh, look. And Ma Moyes ain't succeeded. So everyone else has thought, like, right, let's have a go. Van Gaal's available. He's a world-class manager. He's been manager of Barcelona, Bayern Munich, you know. He's been manager of some good teams. And hopefully, with that kind of manager, we can bring in world-class players. Although we're not in Europe. Yeah. World-class players will be able to see that we've, we've got the potential. We've been in Europe for however many years. Like, we've won the Champions League three times. Yeah. You know, in the last three, four years, we've got to the Champions League final twice. We're not a bad team. We just had a bad season. And as United fans, we just need to get behind the team and get behind whoever is our manager. And hopefully, Giggs will get a place. He deserves a place. He was crying tonight. I've seen pictures and videos of him on Facebook. He was crying. Yeah. That's pure United heart there. And he deserves a place in the coaching lineup. Some, he's going to bring in his number two, which is not going to be Giggs, unfortunately, I don't think. It's going to be someone like Cliver or someone like that. Um, I believe Clive is number two at Holland, isn't he? Yeah. Um, so he's probably going to bring Clive out with him. But Giggs, first team coach, don't see why not. Absolutely. I think Skulls and Butter kind of whistle for United, I think. So I don't think they're going to have any part of it. But, yeah. you know, Giggs here do for us, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you've heard it from Sarah there. We are going to finish in the top four next year. 
I like the optimism and I, I agree with you as well. I want some more Euro away, so we've got to get in there. I've done I've done all five this year. I want some more. I'm going to miss them this year. So. Absolutely, yeah. No, Serge and I were at uh, we're in Munich. Uh, you know, we we thirty seconds of pure ecstasy, wasn't it? Twenty-two. It's twenty-two. Was it twenty-two seconds? Best, best twenty-two seconds of my life. <laughs> at least you went in Olympiacos. That was dire. <laughs> Yeah, even on the telly, that was depressing. So I can't even imagine what it was like to be there. Spending um, about £400 to go to Olympiacos to watch us play like that is... Um, Paddy Craven had it right when he actually said um, that the players should give all the fans their money back that had travelled there. Yeah. You know it's never going to happen, but I mean, a lot of us spent a lot of money to go over there to watch us play. It was terrible. It was like watching a Sunday league team, to be honest. Absolutely. I think that was, in terms of the kind of uh, United fans' stance on Moyes, I think that was one of the tipping points for a lot of Reds, that game. There was Fulham and obviously there was the Olympiacos game, Liverpool. Uh, probably be here all day if I keep reeling them off. But Liverpool, yeah. Liverpool. But yeah, you know, that, that was certainly one of the turning points. But uh, no, thanks a lot for your time today, Sarah. I really enjoyed chatting to you. No problem. Thank you.